Hi, I'm Britt. And I'm Chris. And welcome to our travel channel. Today, we're going to take you over the top 10 things to do in Cape Cod. And starting us off at number 10 is Old Silver Beach in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Make sure to get here early as parking goes quick and it is about $20 to park. This beach is pristine with its white sandy beaches and clear water and is overall a great beach day. Coming in at number 9 is Trunk River Beach. This beach is right on the Shining Sea bike path and is a great pit stop on the way to Woods Hole both of which we'll talk about later on in this video. This place is very scenic with its rocky beach and crashing waves, which is why it makes our top 10 list. Coming in at number eight is Chart Room. This is a nice place to grab lunch or dinner with a beautiful view by the sea. They're known for their mudslides, which are frozen cocktails, so be sure to grab one when you go. And coming in at number seven is mini golf and ice cream at Catamount. This is a great place to just take it easy and grab some ice cream. We love to play putt putt, or in this case, mini golf, anytime we travel somewhere. And this place was one of the best. The weather in Cape Cod is perfect for putt putt. And after you're done getting some holes in one, you can grab some ice cream next door. And I recommend going with the waffle cone. And coming in at number six is Chappaquoit Beach in Falmouth, Massachusetts. And this is actually one of the only places that you can see the sunset from the East Coast. So it's very unique and highly recommend. Coming in at number five is Woods Hole. And this was actually at the end of Shining Sea Bike Path, which we'll get to later once again. And this is actually a cute little town. It has some good little shops you can go shop in. And it's a very touristy area. It actually used to be the center for whaling, shipping, and fishing. But now it is known for its tourism and marine research. Coming in at number four is Cahoon Hollow Beach, which is part of the National Seashore. I recommend to get here early for parking since it does go fast. Once you park, be ready for a long walk down the sand dune. Be aware, the walk back up can be difficult, but it's worth it. The beach is known for its seals, which are everywhere. Just keep in mind that where there are seals, there's probably a great white shark around. While we're visiting, they did have the shark flag up on the beach, and a couple days later, there was a shark sighting. Another reason not to go into the water is it's ice cold, but it feels great after tanning on the beach. When you do get hungry, there's a great restaurant called the Beachcomber at the top of the dune, which has amazing cocktails and great food. And coming in at number three is Martha's Vineyard. We took a ferry out of Hyannis to Oak Bluffs, and it was about $60 per person round trip and an hour boat ride one way. Once you get to Martha's Vineyard, you'll want to get a bus pass and make sure to bring cash as they don't accept credit card and it'll cost around $10 a person for a day pass. We took the bus to Egertown and grabbed lunch at the Seafood Shanty. The place had a great view of the ocean and the food and service was outstanding. From where we sat, you could actually see where parts of Jaws was filmed, making this restaurant that much more of a must. Then, we explored the town as it was very scenic and a great place to walk. You can feel the rich history of the island in the air. After we finished exploring Egger Town, we hopped back on the bus to Oak Bluffs where we went shopping. Oak Bluffs is where you'll find the majority of the souvenir shops and due to the variety of shops, you'll definitely find whatever you're looking for. It was a great way to end the trip at Martha's Vineyard, followed up by watching the captain of the ferry take us back out to sea. And coming in at number two is Well Watch. This is gonna cost about 60 to 70 a person, but well worth it. As you can see here, 
This is Sandy Neck Lighthouse, and it used to be powered by well oil. Kind of sad, but they've gone green as they are now powered by solar panels. And it's a nice way to start the two-hour journey out to sea. Keep in mind, the further you venture out, the colder it gets and it is quite windy, so make sure to bring a jacket or a windbreaker. Once you complete the two-hour journey, you'll spend about an hour looking for wells, and most of the time, you'll see a well, though nothing is guaranteed. On this day, we did see a well and her name was Freckles. She was spectacular and we saw her for almost the entire hour we were out there. Definitely worth it, and just keep in mind, this will take about six hours out of your day. Look at how wide she is. She is such a large one and another great look at her blue. And coming in at number one is the Shining Sea Bike Path. And there's a good reason for it being number one. Most of the other activities in this countdown are along this bike path. This path is in Falmouth, Massachusetts, and we started off around mile seven. There is a place to park your car. Just make sure to rent a bike or BYOB, bring your own bike. Make sure to bring plenty of water, and if you have a refillable water bottle, that would be preferred as they do have some refillable water stations along the way, but not too many of them, so keep that in mind. The path gives you the whole Cape Cod experience as you see everything the Cape has to offer from wildlife to marshes to the seashores. There are some nice restaurants along the path as well. If you do happen to get hungry, you can stop in for a quick snack. And Trunk River Beach is along this path that you saw earlier in the video, as well as the Sipawisset Marches. Not only that, but you'll end up at Woods Hole where you can take a break to eat, shop, or both. This is a highly recommended activity as you'll take in all the sights and sounds the Cape has to offer. Thank you for watching our video. And make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.